and then let's have a go at it. So, integral of, what was it? Um, bracket root x plus b whole squared mm -hmm. over root x. Mm -hmm. With respect to x, I really hope. Yeah. Yeah, okay, fantastic. So, um, now, before I help you out with this question, which I promise I will, what was the first instinct, because you have some working there, and I just wanted to draw on it, because it's on the right track, but I wanna help you know why you're not getting an answer out of it. So what did you try and do? It was something with this denominator, right? Yeah, bring it up. Yeah, okay, so you had, this, uh, we call it a, this is a binomial, right? And it's a binomial, it's expansion, right? Because we're going to square in a minute. And then when you, you said, brought it up, what do you mean by that? Can you expand uh, that a little bit? In negative indices. Good. So actually you did two things at the same time. So number one, you said, hey, I know that that is actually x to the power of a half, right? In index form, right? And in addition to that, it's on the denominator. So if I write it on the numerator, that's why it becomes a negative index, yes? Okay, and then there's a dx there. Now, I'm gonna suggest this is actually a good thing to do. We are just not finished yet. But I'm gonna ask you, like, what made you think that this would be better than this? Yeah, it's like, I don't know, I saw it done once, like an example did it, okay? I'm gonna suggest to you why. Um, we're integrating. Integrating is the thing that we learn as sort of, at least this is how we start learning about it. It's the reverse of differentiation, right? Um, this kind of undoes what differentiation does. Um, have you done areas yet? No. no. So you're going to learn soon that actually integration is more than just the reverse of differentiation. Um, but for now, it's just undoing it, right? Now, if I gave you this thing and I said, can you differentiate this, please? Would you be able to do it? Forget about integrating. If I just gave you this thing, and told you to differentiate, do you think you could? I'm gonna to suggest to you, even if nothing is like immediately jumping to mind, even though it's gonna be a bit of a pain, you can. You can differentiate this thing, right? I'll show you how. If you took this, uh, what kind of a function is this? It's something divided by another. So we have a rule for that, right? It starts with a Q. What's it called? Question. Question rule. Very good. So you would say, oh, I'll call the numerator something. I'll call the denominator something else. And then do, do you remember what the actual quotient rule is? It starts with a... U, yeah, U, V dash. Minus V, U dash. V, U dash. Over. Over. V squared, very good. Okay, it is so very close. You're almost exactly there. The only thing that's different is it's actually backwards. So they're in reverse order, but that's okay. You get the general idea, right? Now here's the thing, for differentiating, we've got a quotient rule. For integrating, there is no quotient rule. <laughs> so you look at it and you're like, this is gross. And so whenever you get presented with a quotient when you're integrating, your instinct is correct that you, like, at all costs, get rid of the quotient. Um, there's a small number of cases where you can deal with a quotient, but um, they're not that common. And so we're just gonna not worry about it for now, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, but I'm gonna suggest that, like, well, you're still kind of stuck, aren't you? Um, when you look at this, it certainly doesn't match any formula you've seen before. Um, and so what are we gonna do with this to, to deal with it? Can I ask you, if it was just this, just this part. Could you deal with that? Could you just integrate x to the power of negative a half? I think we could, right? What would you What would you do? Can you walk me through it? Um, increase the power. Mm -hmm. Divide it by that as well. Yeah, very good. So this is x to the power of some number. It's a gross number, but actually that's fine. Um, it can be any number you like. It can be negative. It can be a fraction. It could be a square root, it could be like some ridiculous number, like I don't even know what that means, right? But everything you just said would work. You would, say it again, you would add one to the power and then, and then divide by whatever that was, right? Uh, sorry, these are two different questions. You'd increase the power by one and then you'd divide by whatever that power is. I have no idea what that means. But that process is actually something you can do to any number. So that's fine, I could deal with this. I just have to deal with all of this stuff over here. 
Now, even though it looks terrible, I promise you can deal with it, right? Let me try and give you a version of this that's just a little bit simpler and then you tell me what you'd do with it. Um, again, I'm gonna do it over here on the right hand side. Suppose you had, not that, but x plus b squared. What would you do with that? If, remember, we're integrating, right? How would you integrate this? Hmm. So I, I can do something very similar to this, right? That would be fine. Um, however, it doesn't always work, right? This rule that you're telling me about, right? If I've got extra things in here, like say a cubed, um, I actually can't do this. Have you encountered questions like this yet where there's something weird and awful in there, right? And that's kind of what we have to deal with here, okay? So here's how we avoid this problem, right? Just don't have something with brackets. I've got something with brackets here and it's because it's squared, but I can actually just multiply this out. I can just treat this like any old expansion, right? So let me give me, give us some more space here. And let's see if we can just do it step by step, okay? So integrate, what I've got here is the square root of x plus b. And squaring just means do it again. Square root of x plus b, okay? Now, uh, you wrote this x to the power of negative half over here. I'll just leave him hanging out there. We'll come back to him later on. Integrate. Now, have a look at this, right? If you got given any expansion, like forget about calculus for a minute. It's just some stuff, some algebraic terms multiplied by other ones, right? How would you expand something like this? What would you do? Yeah, how, how would you do that? What would be the first two things that you would, there's, there's multiplication happening here, right? So what would be the first two things that you would multiply one by the other? Um, root x and Yeah, fantastic. So you would do the, the first ones, right? Um, I often, the way I did it in my brain is I'd, I'd do this one and I'd do it twice, right? And then I've got another color here. I'd do the second one and I'd also do that one twice. Okay, so let's just go through this one step at a time. So I've still got some brackets here, but root x times root x, what's that? It's just x, cool. Root x times b, it's like, oh, well b is just a, it's just a constant, isn't it? So normally I would write constants out the front, like so. What do I do next? I've done the orange ones, right? I'm up to now the, the green ones, so I've got b times root x, so that seems familiar. And then can you tell me what's the last term? B squared, very good. Now, this, even though it's longer, it's much easier to deal with, right? Because I can just go term by term and integrate one thing at a time, right? Uh, except there is this thing that's just hanging out here, right? So let's just put that there. Now, at this point here, um, I've got a few different things I could simplify. Does anyone have any suggestions what I should simplify first? B root x. Yeah, what about it? Um, we can add them together. Yeah, we've got a name for that. We call it collecting like terms because they're both a square root of x term. So what have I got here is integral of x plus, two. yeah, I've got two of them. B squared. And Co, at this point, you have collected all the like terms you can, but what I can do with this thing in here is, the thing that was your instinct in the first place. You know how you put this square root, you put it into index form, right? That's because square roots are gross in, in calculus terms, but indices are easy, um, even when they were weird indices like square roots or pi or things like that. So help me out here. I've got an x, regular old x, that's fine, but then what's this gonna be? x to the half, so I've got 2b x to the half plus b squared. Okay, it's kind of funny because we're like, I'm supposed to be integrating. I haven't done any integrating yet. We are one step away. This multiplies by everything inside, yeah? So I'm gonna need to do this one at a time. Is that okay? So when I do it for the first term, x times x to the negative a half, what do you remember about your index laws? There's really a one 
hiding there. Yeah, I'm going to add those indices, right? So 1 plus negative a half is just a half, because it's the same as subtraction. So x to the half. Okay, watch out for this one. This is, um, don't worry about the constant coefficient, x to the half times x to the negative half. What happens to the indices? Yeah, they cancel out. And by the way, of course they cancel out because this used to be a root x and this used to be a divide by root x. So that's why they just cancel with each other. So that leaves you with 2b. And then this is just a constant, so it's b squared times, well, there's no other x terms, so I'll just write that as it is. Hooray! All of that is going to be integrated.